nutrient-rich organic soils are probably one of the lesser-known potential contributors to climate change. These land plots, in fact, are a hidden source of greenhouse gas emissions, being natural carbon storages that can turn into significant emitters if not sustainably managed. Life Orgbalt aims to investigate the potential of these soils through the implementation of sustainable management practices able to minimize emissions. How were these management practices identified? It was a bit of work. Initially, we screened our policy documents in our partner countries, looking for already existing uh, climate change mitigation measures. Uh, in fact, we understood that there are little, and um, then we started to investigate uh, scientific literature. And based on uh, results of uh, studying scientific literature, we decided on a set of uh, climate change mitigation measures we are uh, now investigating in project. Why are demo sites so crucial for the project? Demo sites are cornerstone of uh, any life project, including ours, and uh, in demo sites we are training our partners as well uh, as our stakeholders uh, to understand the impact of climate change mitigation measures. As well, demo sites are used for uh, monitoring of impact of those measures. Uh, that's why we are doing greenhouse gas measurements there as well as uh, environmental data measurements. The climate change mitigation measures tested in the project can be divided into five groups two within the forest sector and three within the agricultural sector. For forestry climate change mitigation measures, we have two key groups. Measures related to afforestation and forest restoration, measures that aim at increased forest carbon stocks through the modification of forest management practices. Let's find out about their main characteristics and benefits. Forest climate change mitigation measures have been implemented in eight demo sites located in Latvia and three demo sites located in Finland. We are evaluating uh, measures related to forest regeneration, such as regeneration without reconstruction of uh, drainage systems. By these uh, actions, we expect to avoid reduction in soil carbon stock uh, due to increased groundwater level and uh, to reduce uh, risks of uh, natural disturbances in uh, forests with uh, wet organic soils. Regarding measurements aiming to increase forest carbon stocks and potentially reduce soil greenhouse gas emissions, um, we are demonstrating uh, modi modified uh, forest management practices such as wood ash application after uh, commercial felling and uh, planting of black alder in uh, riparian buffer zones. By these measures, we expect uh, increased increment in uh, living biomass and uh, as a result also increased uh, stock in the pools such as living biomass, uh, dead wood, litter, soil and also harvested wood products. What about Finland? Are there significant regional differences in the characteristics and benefits of measures involving the modification of forest management practices? Yes, we, we do share many similarities, but also our climate and geology and hydrology are different to varying extent and of course that must be reflected in the management. And uh, our drainage systems are more intensive in, in Finland, so our water levels are deeper as a rule compared to Baltic conditions and they of course vary across our long country. And it's because of the water level management issues that we are focusing on continuous cover forestry because we see that that offers us uh, a possibility to control soil water level in a, in a manner that it, it remains higher than, than in, with conventional, conventional management and that should reduce the soil emissions. For agricultural climate change mitigation measures, we have three key groups. Measures involving change of crop type, measures involving complete or partial afforestation, measures involving climate smart drainage activities. Agricultural climate change mitigation measures have been implemented in six demo sites located in Latvia. 
about another crop altering measure, it's introduction of legumes into cereal production and we are doing this to test if by this uh, measure we could reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, based on additional biomass input as well as um, by uh, decreasing mineral fertilizers used in crop production uh, based on nitrogen fixing crop which is legumes. So uh, we are testing this measure, let's see what outcome will be. The main characteristic of this measure is land use change. And we are changing land use from agricultural land to forestry land or we are establishing agroforestry systems. And by this we aim to increase again biomass input in, in soil uh, from different kind of biomass residues as well as we are aiming for greenhouse gas uh, emission reduction from soil based on land use change. The main idea of the measure of controlled drainage in grasslands is to hold water in agricultural fields during seasons when drainage is not needed. This is ensured by incorporating a water level control structure in the existing or new, newly installed uh, subsurface drainage system. Unlike conventional subsurface drainage system which removes excess water to the depth of drains, Control drainage increases groundwater level closer to the soil surface, thus facilitating water retention and storage within the soil profile. It is expected that emissions of greenhouse gases from organic soils will be reduced due to increased groundwater level, which uh, directly affects availability of oxygen and microbial activity in the soil profile. Initially, this practice of controlled drainage has been uh, designed for water quality purposes, but we can see that this can be also adapted for reduction of greenhouse gases emissions. The measure of conversion of cropland used for cereal production into grassland, considering periodic plowing, will reduce emissions of greenhouse gases as agricultural land utilized for grassland is plowed and grass seeded every three to four years. In comparison with annual performance of such field operations in case of cereals. By using this practice, uh, soil disturbance causing mineralization of organic matter is substantially reduced. Nutrients rich organic soils are complex yet not completely investigated soils with fascinating potentials there being able to act either as carbon sink and greenhouse gas source brought them to the center of the political debate on climate change. The Life Orgbalt researchers have been working and continue working to unravel the still unsolved scientific problems, helping to find answers that could serve both research and policymakers toward a coordinated, sustainable and socio-economic effective management of these soils.